Sunday, lovelies. From Liverpool Lime Street and Manchester Piccadilly. Saturday night, Piccadilly. <laughs> Saturday night, Piccadilly. <laughs> to the smaller stations. The railway is a lifeline for the north of England. Customer satisfaction, that's our destination. But the system is under pressure as never before. We've got a Leeds service cancelled, a Liverpool service cancelled, and a Piccadilly service cancelled. And staff are in the firing line. Move a bit more down for me, please, so I can get everyone on. What's the worst thing that happened? You punch us. It's happened before, it'll happen again. I suck everyone from top to bottom is a complete waste of time. Now, cameras have been allowed behind the scenes. Oh. At the company that runs some of the busiest and most crowded trains in Britain, Trans Pennine Express. Guys, just stay there for me. Keep your head stuck. It's not sponsored. Filmed during a make or break year. We are expanding our fleet by over 60%. For Trans Pennine, this is the biggest thing we've ever done. It's going to go right. It's got to. <laughs> Has to. This is the inside story of what it really takes to run a railway. Just with the weather, then nothing at all is moving on Piccadilly. I can confirm the two children are on the tracks at the minute. And get the North back on track. We'll deliver for the North. This time. Wow. A crime wave. Watch your back and smack your head. Sees a crackdown across the network. Keep your head stuck. Sit on there. Is there me? I'm arresting you. Possession with intent to supply drugs. Thirty million people pass through Manchester Piccadilly every year. Some with malicious intent. Crime is up 12% across Britain's railways. And incidents involving knives have tripled in recent years. But today, the British Transport Police are fighting back. Today we're doing a knife arch operation. Manchester Piccadilly is a unique pinch point for us. It's got a huge passenger footfall through the station. So it's, it's really being tactical about where we place it, wanting to get the most people that we can to pass through the actual knife arch. The way it works is people see the knife arch, they see the officers on the station, and they, they react to our presence. Anyone who tries to swerve the arch finds a plainclothes officer waiting to pounce. The aim is to get the criminals off the streets with knives. Over the next few weeks, police are set to make the knife arch part of every commuter's journey. This has to be a safe environment for everyone to travel in. So if you're a criminal, you're seeking to try and operate on this railway, commit an illicit act, we're going to catch you and we're going to put you in jail. It's not just the hub stations experiencing a crime wave. A hundred miles away in Hull, offences are up 50% in just a year. New manager Dan Fox has been drafted in. And at the top of his in-tray is dealing with crime at the station. Antisocial behaviour here is quite an issue. A lot of it's vandalism, but then that can quite often boil over into more serious issues. There have been the odd violent assault on the station. We've had members of staff are assaulted. The problems are escalating by the day. We had basically one 24-hour period, which we had a number of arrests. I've got a list of them, because I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. One arrest for a racially aggravated public order offence. We had a large-scale fight two hours later. And then the icing on the cake, quite a serious fight out the front of the station, with someone ended up having his head getting stamped on. So, a lot going on, really. To try and cut crime, Dan's deployed a full-time security squad. Can't be on the car park on the first. If you're smoking, you can just be outside for us. Cheers. But every day brings fresh problems. With rush hour looming, security ambassadors Matt and Dave are called to a medical emergency. 
Do you know how long he's been there for? Only about five minutes. He looks disorientated. A man is having a suspected epileptic seizure. Sorry, do you want a hand? Jim, is here. Come on, come and sit on the step. And that way you're not going to fall down. Just come to the main entrance, please. A first aider arrives to assess the man's condition. Okay. So just check your head, okay? Call ambulance. Ambulance, please. Yeah, I'm security at Hall Paragon Interchange. Uh, I've got a call from volunteers about a male that had a uh, seizure or let, let, he is, says he's epileptic. We saw me, yes. We put that out for it. Right, we've got it's not yeah, his breathing's really shallow at the moment. I can't even see him sort of taking a All breath. Right. And you want to just pull up? All right, thank you very much. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Are you hurt anywhere? Talk to me. Yeah. Get on the stretcher. Give us your arm, Pat. Are you ready? One, two, three. We're going to stand up now. They've now taken him into the back of the ambulance. We're going to take him over to the hospital to get him checked over. Hey, man. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everything and anything can happen in the station. It's not just security, it's dealing with everybody that's got a problem and, and needs our help. Dan is determined to make a difference, but he's never run a station like this one. Before this, I worked at Huddersfield as a station team leader. It was a bit of a step up to this one, a bit of a learning curve. But by the time I'm done, I'd like to leave the station that the city can be proud of. Dan's just one of many newbies on the network. To try and turn the rising tide of crime, the British Transport Police has also been on a recruitment drive. It's Saturday night in York, and rookie officer Chris Short is in at the deep end. I passed out uh, last week. This is my, uh, my first Saturday night shift in York. It's a bit of a... Uh... Baptism of fire, I think. Move down that way, you get on quicker. York's a very popular spot. You get a lot of people travelling from different areas to uh, to come down to York, whether that be Teesside, Durham, Newcastle area. Doing my lot, weren't they? Yeah, another we all lot. <laughs> Dealing with drunk people, you've got to be on the ball with it. It's just the unpredictability of what what could happen next. And unfortunately, as the night goes on, people get drunker and drunker. The night is still young, but Chris is already feeling the heat. Anxious, because I've still got uh, approximately four hours to go, so an anything could happen. And sure enough, he soon receives an urgent call for backup. A man's been collared for drunken disorderly, and he's not going quietly. Just tried to head, me. Just tried to headbutt my fellow officer. Are you on the off? Listen, dickhead. You're a sad you. And you think you work for the police. I do not try to headbutt anybody. You mop me there. Keep your head still. Keep your head still. Get these eyes. They're not coming anywhere. So if you stay compliant. I'll The man's refusing to comply, so rookie Chris steps in to assist his fellow officers. Hey, 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 hey. Calm yeah. down, calm down. Get out of my pocket, funny right. dickhead! To no avail. Right. Please lift your legs up. Please, can you see how close this is? Just point your head down. I know, but right. just point your head down. Somebody said to me, sit on there. Listen to me. Please, have a, please over there. Please, please relax. Put your foot in there. Relax, please. Put your foot in there, please. Put your foot in there. Please, reach easy with it, please. Horrible scruffy. The unenviable job of escorting the man in the van goes to Chris. Jake, just calm down. You're a f***ing liar! You're a Oh, please! Hey, bud, just headbutt the van, mate. I'll pay your wages! Remember that? I'll pay your wages! I'll come 
After dropping him off at the cells, Chris is back on the beat within the hour. Leech, 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 leech. I didn't really know what to expect. Seeing somebody in that kind of situation, it's uh, it's a bit daunting. Oh, All right, mate. In terms of how I sort of feel at the end of my Saturday night, although somebody's already been escorted to uh, custody, so far so good, I think. Coming up... The police swoop in. What have we got in here? to wage war on the railway's drug-dealing gangs. You can smell a bit of weed on you, all right. I'm going to detain you for a search. In Hull, station manager Dan Fox is trying everything he can to fight the rising crime. We can request through the police that someone is given a three-month ban from the station. I've probably signed off about 20 or so, and I'll keep banning people when they need banning. Security ambassadors Matt and Dave have to enforce the ban. Off the bike. And it's a full-time job in itself. Down to 10. The alarm's been raised at the ticket office. So we just had a report that there's a male consuming alcohol and probably abusing the staff members in there. The man's already barred from the station for a violent attack on Matt. Stand back. He's a guy that had bitten me before. He's got bail conditions not to be on the station or near me. Keep walking out. Watch your back and smack your head. Watch your back. Have to blow your way. Telling you. Watch your back. Interchange Civic. Civic, are you receiving? Civic receiving, go ahead. Yeah, if you just turn your cameras onto Ferring Square, we've got one male who's uh, just been in the station giving the staff members verbal abuse. Yeah, receiving, I'm aware of it. Of all their problems, drug crime is the biggest. Can you smell that? Yeah. It's up fivefold in the last year. We do get quite a lot of drug users. Spice is a common one. We find a lot of people that like to smoke in the toilets here. Interchange, go ahead. An all too familiar calls come in about a suspected drug user in the gents. Two members of the public explain to me he's been in there for about 20 minutes, uh, which is quite unusual. You're right in love. Yeah, I'm coming out now, bro. I'm just I spoke with the male and he claimed that he was cleaning a uh, leg wound. I'll tell you the truth. Which is a bit suspicious considering he was in a cubicle toilet. The majority of the time when we ask people to leave, they, they will do, but you, you know, we do get abuse from it as well. Cheers. It's just not stuff that goes away overnight. I do like a challenge, and this is certainly a challenge. TransPennine spent £500 million on a fleet of brand new trains. But they're packed with so much new technology that staff face an exam in how to use them. Conductor Nicky May's test is today. Wow. Wow. I've worked in the rail industry now for, I think this is my eighth year, and suddenly now I've got a new train to contend with and I feel like a dinosaur. I'm evolving today, hopefully. Noting any wrong move is conductor instructor Rob Buxton. Oh, I'm got me whistle out because I'm not ready. Can I do it? Oh please, would you? I'll step off. Close your door. It's not the best of starts for Nikki. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to head into the back cab. The Novas have a myriad of extra safety systems compared to the trains Nikki's used to. To pass, she must master them all. So 
So isolating that door open, can we lock it in the open position as well? Yes, Knowing how to get an automatic door open in an emergency is essential. That's not isolated. Try again. Well, that's a bit bizarre because... Do you know, I'm really struggling with these doors. It almost feels as though they're back to front. So that's off. That's off. Oh, there you go. I've turned it again. So I've turned it again at full rotation. I think you may be unscrewing the mechanism. That's it. Right, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. For me, it's not going well. I'm, I'm awkward about everything. We've got potentially an issue with the toilets. OK. How would you lock this in the open position? In the open yeah. position? Oh, my goodness me, Rob, I can't remember. I'm bombing. Drug crime has risen 500% at Hull Station in a year. So Dan Fox has turned to the British Transport Police. I've started um, regular meetings with the BTP inspector for our area. We're working our hardest to actually try and resolve the issues. A task force has been set up to tackle county lines gangs smuggling drugs into Hull on trains. And today, undercover officers Rob and Bell are leading a sting operation to catch gang members. Hull has got a, a, an industrial heritage and history, but over the years that has crumbled away. People are finding times hard, and as a result, um, drugs quickly move in. This is a very highly organised operation. We have the uniform officers nearby and also the assistance of dog units who are there to pick up on traces of drugs. But primarily we will be out on the concourse looking for behavioural cues. It's not long before a man arrives through the ticket gates who draws Rob's attention. Because we've seen you coming through a couple of times, because your journey is a little bit elongated to us and because we can smell a bit of weed on you, all right, I'm going to detain you for a search. County Lines is organised crime groups and gangs in large cities, sending young or vulnerable people to smaller towns to transport their drugs. That's all right, mate. The fact that you're being honest with us and open, that's a good sign, OK? The telltale signs of County Lines are people that look visibly vulnerable. That's OK. There's your six there. Thanks very much for your time. And they could be in clothes that look like they've, they've been worn for days. County Lines trafficking has increased 50% in a year. And as number plate recognition makes cars easier to trace, more and more drug dealers are taking the train. Anything in here? No. But Bell and Rob aren't just looking for drugs today. What have we got in here? We also look out for burn phones, cheap disposable phones, which are basically being used to sell the drugs. What are you doing with this phone? The county lines comes from the fact that this is all based on a phone operation. Unlock it for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the IMEI number off it. I want to make sure that this isn't involved with anything that it shouldn't be. Tracing burner phones can lead the task force right to the front door of gang leaders. We're interested in finding out who owns that phone, and if we need to, we can actually see where that phone has been in the country. Well, he was very reluctant to give his IMEI. If their intel is right, there could be more persons of interest on the next train. Out on the tracks, conductor Nicky is four hours into a six-hour exam. Thanks, gentlemen. Uh, my sincerest apologies. The train is running about 19 minutes late as we speak. Uh, I can't actually offer you a, a reasonable excuse. And it's not going to plan. Right, so coach C, emergency equipment, etc. There'll be two fire extinguishers. Um, where are we, coach C? Right. It should be the um, uh, uh, defibrillator. So it's one fire extinguisher defibrillator because it's coach C. Yes. It's just nerves. She knows it. Um, it's just getting her confidence up to the stage where she can actually work the train on her own. To get in, all you need to do is pull up. So if you just. And if you can take off the lock mechanism for me, fantastic. And then lock the door in the open position for me. Oh, that's easy. That's it now, locked in the open position. That's that's simple, easy. isn't it? Yeah, yeah I'm happy with that. So this is your galley door. It must remain open at all times. However, the fire door shuts in an emergency, but there is an escape route. <laughs> yeah. You have a nice little doggy door. 
As part of your assessment, you are required to uh, make your way through. Are you kidding me? Nope. My goodness me, I hope television doesn't make things look bigger than they actually are, because, really? Nikki's got the giant cat flap licked, but has she done well enough to qualify? So no, well done for today. Um, you can breathe a sigh of relief. You have passed out. Very impressed. Well done. Right, kiss up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. You've been amazing. Thank you. Most tolerant man I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah. I've been desperate to get to this point for weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks. It just means now that I can operate all the different routes. For me now, it's going to be getting as many of these trains as possible. I'm I am actually quite giddy. Happy days. I can't wait. In Hull, the county line's drug operation is netting more suspects. A man arriving from Doncaster has been picked out by a sniffer dog. Why would you have tobacco in these little pouches? It looks like a herbal cannabis. However, it has no odour, which would suggest to us that this is a synthetic cannabinoid, which we know as spice. This could be a controlled substance, so we need to get it tested. Spice is an emerging problem. It's very easy to move about because it's odourless. It's a very cheap drug and it's also very powerful. You'll often see people that have almost a zombie-like appearance about them and it is quite prevalent in city centres. There's not enough to arrest him for dealing. You don't have to say anything. May I be defensive, you do not say something called question that you later rely on in court. But he does receive a caution. Amounts like this can be used by county line runners as payment for what they're carrying on the railway. Well, we don't know. The man continues to claim it's nothing more than rolling tobacco. You take my tobacco for nothing. If it turns out to be okay, you can have it back. But at the moment, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, I'm not in three well, weeks. No, regardless of what you say, we're taking it. We will be submitting these for testing at the laboratory. If they do turn out to be a synthetic cannabinoid, then he'll receive a summons to court in the post. Okay. okay, all right. Have a nice day, all right. It's a start, but Rob and Bell are hoping for more to come. Coming up, controllers struggle to keep trains in service. If it don't go back tonight, it's out of service in the morning. It will go back, because it has to go back. And the BTP turn the screw on the county line's gangs. I'm going to be searching you under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Transpennine Express carried a record 30 million passengers around the north of England last year. With more of us travelling than ever, the company needs new recruits all across the business. Welcome to Sarah. Sarah's our new addition to the team. Existing staff are also getting opportunities to step up. So just get set up and get yourself comfortable. At Manchester Piccadilly, Matt Maudsley is two weeks from fulfilling his dream of becoming a train driver. I've got the signal now, so I'll take up to 15 miles an hour as we depart, Matt. 15 miles an hour, yeah. Today is his last chance to practice out on the tracks with instructor Liam before his final exams. The power off. Yeah, good stuff. The speed's coming off nicely there. But the railway wasn't Matt's first port of call. I worked um, at BAE Systems in Barrow and Furness, building the astute class nuclear submarine. So I spent three years doing that and then moved to Manchester to join the railway. Started out as a caterer and then became a guard. And then went to work in the control room for about four years. This signal here means that we're into the station, doesn't it? Into Stoby Bridge. Yeah, yeah, so we need to know where we're shutting off and where we're breaking. After years of disappointment, Matt finally beat off 7,000 applicants to make it onto the course. As long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a train driver. I applied about five times before I actually was, was successful, and now I'm finally here. As well as 245 hours of driving, Matt has to spend 16 weeks in the classroom. You need to know the routes like the back of your hand. Every single junction, every speed change, every signal. There's just so much to, to learn. When I go home, 
I'm also looking through maps and my rule books and things. So it is quite an intense time, but it will all be worth it. But there are some things no amount of study can prepare a driver for. I was 50 hours into my training, and unfortunately, um, I hit a person. They, um, they commit a sui suicide, basically. Um, it definitely made me think about the job, um, but in the end, I took a few days off and um, thought the best thing to do was just to get back in the seat. That's helped, helped me greatly. I think if I was to sit at home thinking about it, would I even come back? I don't know, to be honest. Matt's done well today, but he must still pass a tough final assessment before he can drive solo. There you go, very good. Yeah, it was a really good trip, that. This means a lot to me. Fingers crossed. At the end of this week, I'll be a qualified train driver. More and more new trains are rolling out across Trans Pennine Express's network. But half of all services still rely on a seasoned fleet of Class 185s. This is a problem now, we're putting a 185 on this Sierra 5 one. Like all trains, they need regular maintenance. 406 need to go back to Hardwick tonight. Must go back, yeah. Sorry. It should have gone back last night, but didn't. Okay. Sorry. Uh... Getting trains to the depot without disrupting services is always a juggling act for duty control manager Anne Smith. They want that unit back for maintenance, so we'll swap it to meet the customer demand what we need at Preston there, and we'll swap it back again later tonight. Anne needs to get the train to the depot, or she'll have an even bigger headache tomorrow. If it don't go back tonight, it's out of service in the morning. That's fine. Simple as that. Yeah. He's panicking now because he thinks so. <laughs> I mentioned his unit. Well, I'm just going to borrow it and then put it back. Uh, it will go back. It will go back because it has to go back. At the depot, one train already in dry dock is in need of a major operation. And it's supervisor Dave Graham who has to ensure it's back out on the tracks by the end of the day. Attention staff, day shift to the performance centre. Thank you. Get it going. So we'll start off with 151 semi-permanent couple overall. Safety specs, bump caps, just don't do anything that you shouldn't do. Be gone. So today we're doing a semi-permanent coupler. That's what they're replacing. Each of these units is made up of three cars, joined by heavy-duty couplers. So this is the new one that's been made up. Each coupler can pull the 112-ton weight of the two carriages behind it for up to 12 years' service. The amount of mileage that it's doing, the vibration, the turning. Each component has got a shelf life. After clocking up two and a half million miles, they need replacing, but they don't come off without a fight. The bottle it into like 1,600 newton metres. You're not going to be able to split them of a hand spanner. We've got uh, proper Christie guns and proper tooling to, to do that. Technician Steve Wyatt has been replacing couplers for seven years. We've disconnected that side. So we're going to move that section of the train away from this semi permanent coupler. He knows it's a Herculean task, so leaves the muscle work to Big Jim, his younger, fitter colleague. Glad to do that. Who can push a 56-ton carriage on his own. You wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> World's strongest man's really always on at Christmas, actually. isn't it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> The 600 kilo weight of the coupler itself is taken by an industrial hoist as the bolts on the opposite end are released. Washes, please. The coupler is free and the overhaul's on schedule. Clean it out, the other side of the workshop, then clean the new one in and we'll try it all back together. But old hand Steve isn't counting his chickens just yet. We have a procedure to which we are adhered to strictly, but things change. You can pick faults up and it can create a delay. 
and any delay in the depot quickly becomes a problem for the service. There's not a lot you can do if you haven't got a semi-permanent copper on it. <laughs> Back in Hull, undercover officers Rob and Bell have received a tip-off about the next train from Scarborough. There's a guy coming up, Rob. See him spitting. That kid, that's on I'm thinking. The suspect is travelling with another man. They're pulled aside for questioning separately. Just walk past the dog. The dog's done an indication on you about drugs. One of them appears to be vulnerable. I'm going to show you my identification. That's me. I'm an officer of the British Transport Police. He meets a profile of a county lines runner. Yeah. I'm going to be searching you under Section 23 of the yeah. Misuse of Drugs Act. Yeah. Keep your hands out of your pockets for yeah. me. Stop search is indiscriminate. A vulnerable person would get the same treatment as anybody else. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Keep them there. Put your hands like that, mate. Just while we're searching, mate. Bell's hunch was right. Right. I am arresting you. Suspicion of possession with intent to supply. There's a considerable amount of cannabis found in possession on both males. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Our suspicion was they were to be supplied in Hull. Come on. Both men are taken into custody and their homes searched. There was a substantial amount of drugs that were found during the house search. Enough evidence to progress them through the courts for drug dealing. At the end of the day, from the information that we gather, we can find the route back and prosecute the people who are organising this criminal activity. These people are ruthless. Arresting vulnerable people is sometimes a good thing. We are offering them a pathway out of being exploited. They'll look after you. They will look after you, and they'll look after your welfare. It always makes us feel good, removing drugs from the communities that they were targeted for. We feel that we are making a difference. Back at the Ardwick depot, Steve and the team are ready to attach the new coupler to make a three-car train again. You have a little wet gun? Yeah, got it. So far, everything's gone to plan, but they now face a 600 kilo version of threading the needle. We're going to lift it up now to put them over the studs. But to get it parallel and square, it takes a little bit of adjusting because the clearance on the studs is minimal. So if we don't get it square, it's an issue getting them on. Yeah. Fingers, watch your fingers. Right, move it in, Stu. Move it west. Bit more. The new coupler fits onto the bolt perfectly. Beautiful. A pulley system's used to gently roll the second 56-ton carriage towards the other end of the coupler. So there's no need for Big Jim to flex his muscles. Nice and steady. Whoa, stop, scotch it. Just go over a little bit. Okay. Careful, careful. Oh, 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 oh. It's the baby. This time, it's Big Jim's gentle side Steve has to be thankful for. You've got a lovely touch, Jim. Thank you very much. That's the hardest bit of the job done. All that remains is to cover the gap between the carriages with a brand new gangway. It's good to have a good working relationship, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Good day's work. I think they'll be happy with that. And the unit's good for another two and a half million miles. We're confident, professionally, that train's ready for service. Trainee driver Matt is at the halfway point of his intensive eight-day assessment. And today he faces his toughest test yet, the dreaded simulator. OK, mate, so you'll be starting at station 11. The speed of this section of line is 25, and it goes up to 30, and then 60. It's uh, a really important day for him, so that we can see how he would respond to unexpected situations. 
This is really sophisticated technology. It's uh, as real as it can be. Can drivers fail doing this? It's possible, yeah. They throw all sorts of stuff at you. Objects on the track, cars, basically any kind of situation that you think isn't going to happen out there, they can do in here. I've created a scenario where there's a tree on the line, so he's just approaching where the tree is as he comes around the corner. Matt won't be able to brake in time. It's how he deals with the collision that's important in this test. This is an emergency call. This is the driver of one Papa A9 on the down Huddersfield. I have run into a tree. I need a line block on all lines in the Black Rock area. Over. Driver, I can give you an assurance now that all lines are blocked. Please investigate and report back to me. Signal it out. Well done, Matt. I was pleased to see that you responded quickly and that you, you used the emergency button because, as you know, other trains will hear that call as well and they will stop. So far, so good. But Matt now faces a tougher test that could derail his chances. I'm going to create a scenario where he's pulling away from the station and somebody activates the passenger alarm. It's quite critical, this one. We have to really drill this into the drivers. And it requires more role play from Rob. I have to play the part of the conductor, control, and the signalman. A bit of a jack of all trades. You trained in drama? No. <laughs> drama queen. <laughs> driver speaking, please state your emergency. Uh, hello, mate. Uh, I'm on the wrong train. OK, do you have an emergency? Uh, no, I, I just got on the wrong train. It's just not emergency use only. Bear with me, I will speak to the conductor. You will not be able to get off this train though, until the next stop. I was pleased that you applied the emergency brake immediately upon the passenger alarm. So why is that critical, Matt? Uh, that's critical because we could have somebody trapped in the door. We could be dragging them along the platform. Seconds count in that situation. Absolutely right. Well done. Rob's not winning any awards for acting, but Matt's passed this latest test with flying colours. Matt's done really well today. He's followed all the rules and regulations and he's responded exactly as we would want one of our drivers to respond. But there is another week to go, so we'll see how he does next week. It's taken a long time to get to this point and I'm not going to mess it up. I am going to pass and uh, I'll be driving my first train. Nervous, but yeah. It, it will happen, definitely. Back in Hull, Dan Fox has a new weapon in the fight against crime. We've installed a system that can play classical music through our tannoy systems. It does create quite a nice environment, especially when we have a station like this, which is so old and grand. Um, and ask my colleagues if they'd be kind enough to turn it on for us. Hopefully they'll say yes and be polite. One to four, over. There you go. Nice bit of classical music. Do you feel an immediate sense of calm? I always feel a sense of calm. I don't think I could do the job if I didn't feel a sense of calm. I blow up in private when no one's watching. I think part of it is just to chase people off. We don't want to listen to that music. Vivaldi might send antisocial youth scurrying, but it's unlikely even Beethoven's fifth will deter hardened drug dealers. It's not been in very long, so we're still looking for anecdotal evidence of when it's worked. The County Lines Task Force has made almost 300 arrests across the network since the end of last year. And in Hull, drug and violent crime is down, and theft and criminal damage has been halved in just two months. Still continuing to work with the BTP, and they're promising they're going the right direction. And we have days where virtually nothing happens. Back at Manchester Piccadilly, passengers are getting used to being funneled through a knife arch, and it seems to be making a difference. 
Here at Manchester, we've had a 33% reduction in weapon-based offences in the last year. We are making environments such as this hostile for criminals to operate in. The entire network could soon be safer for all in the north to travel on. The BTP are utterly committed to trying to reduce violent offences and we're making good inroads into that. It's been a tough 12 months for the railways and we're starting to make that recovery. We're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's graduation day at Manchester Airport Station. Matt's qualified as Trans Pennine's 495th driver and he's riding solo for the first time. From here, from Manchester Airport, uh, through to Manchester Piccadilly. I'm going to be out on my own. I'm feeling quite nervous about that prospect. I've had 300 hours of driving with an instructor, so I'll be babysitting you, I suppose, almost. And when obviously when I got my own, they're not going to be there. It's just going to be me. So I'm pretty nervous. I want it to run smoothly. I want nothing to go wrong. On the foot of that first shift, I want it to be as smooth, really, really smooth. As Matt gets into his stride on his maiden voyage, he hits a caution signal. Yeah, they're going to shut off the power. Got the breaker. And his Airport Express service is brought to a standstill. A few miles away in the control room... Hello, Transparent Control. ..a familiar voice takes his call. All oh, right, OK. Yellow and back to green. OK, Papa 7-1. OK, brilliant. Thanks, Matthew. And you all right? Yeah, good. Thanks, Matthew. All right, take care. Thanks, Matthew. Oh, that was really nice. That was Matthew. He used to work... Uh, he's a new driver. He used to work in here. Well, was, was everything here with Matthew? Yeah, we've got a signal reversion. But it's fine. I'll follow that up. Back out on the line, Matt's got the green light to continue to live his boyhood dream. Something that I've wanted to do since a very little age. And now I'm finally here in the job that I wanted. When I found out I got the job, I was ecstatic. I was really, really happy. I still am now. It's a great job to be in. I do love it. And of course, I could be here for behind the controls for another 30 years. Next time, yes. <laughs> just as the network is getting back on track, quite impressed, successful, tick, tick, tick. Coronavirus plunges the railway into its biggest crisis yet. We come into contact with thousands of people every single day. Everyone on board are at risk. We're looking down the barrel of a gun. It's really quite scary. We're going to keep going until the very end. I want to make sure that the north keeps running. And you can catch that next Wednesday at 8. And if you or someone you know has been affected by any of the issues raised in tonight's episode, please go to channel5.com slash helplines for info and support. Next, a gang of daylight burglars are spotted in hiding thanks to thermal imaging. It's new. Traffic cops 